thin layer of mist lazily coils down the hills of Jompui, Sakantang, Longtarai and Atarumura and spreads over the vast undulating valley of legends and anecdotes. The entire Terran whispers about Rajmala and accounts of a lunar dynasty which migrated here many years ago. The children of a lesser goddess started the journey from their Bodo home in Central Asia. The journey continues, picking up on its way many more footsteps and faces, faces of many communities of faiths, languages and beliefs. Tripura, the land of traditions and of changing times. We are in Sipaipara, home of the Devbarmas of the Tripuri community, classified under the Indo-Mongoloids or Kirats. The Devbarmas are linguistically very close to the Boros, who spread over the entire Brahmaputra Valley to form a solid block in Northeast India. Agrarian in lifestyle, the Devbarmas were familiar with the traditional jhum cultivation. With the changing times, the need for producing more cash crops was strongly felt. Gradually, the Devbarmas came to accept plough cultivation and cash crops like jute, rice or cotton are produced these days both in jhum and in ploughed fields. The Devbarmas are considered the most enlightened community. They speak Kokborok, a Boro group language of the Tibeto-Burmese subfamily of the Austric family. Kokborok, literally meaning the language of man, had no written script till recently. The government played a major role in officially recognizing and introducing it at the school level. Today, it boasts many literary works. Significant cultural programs are held and we happen to be in the rehearsal room of Chetwang. The age-old folk tale unfolds the agony of a sister trying to hide herself from the leering look of her brother and finally getting shelter in the trees. Okay. The art of weaving is a primary concern of women. The Tipras believe lightning will strike the man who weaves, but the loom is always prepared by men. Blue is the most popular color. Other colors used are red, brown, black and green. Life spins around agriculture. A favorite dish of the community, Bangai cake, is made of binni rice grown in the Jhum fields. Taken with dry fish curry, Bangai tastes all the more delicious. Modern technology is a reality. So is IT education. Hands that weave magic on the carpets also play on keyboards. Times change, but the changing times absorb the old traditions. The chants of the old shaman cast a magic spell around the bamboo groves. Prayers are offered to Bura Devna. 
Deb Badma's journey is a journey through time, and time stands still in a young hamlet of Kami. Long ago, the mythical bird, Garuda, folded his wings atop Sibrang Kung near the Jumpui range. He hatched a piece of stone to give birth to Dev Lakshmi and Devatarani, the first young man and woman. From household appliances, to the building of tong or hut, bamboo is the most widely used material. Weaving again is exclusively a woman's job. The Ryangs believe a man working on the loom will be attacked by a bear. Materials and tools for weaving are almost the same as everywhere. Sword, shuttle, backstrap, shed stick, heddle, beams, posts, breast rods, and lease rods. The machine consists of two wooden rollers inserted horizontally into two posts erected on a short but heavy wooden plank. The rollers are geared in opposite directions with a crank. Products particularly popular are Rinai, Risa, Basei, Pandri, Kutui, Rikatu, Baki and Kamchai. Basketry is one of the few crafts the Ryangs are proud of. Materials are simple, bamboo splits, canes, creepers and an iron chopper. The art also assumes the character of a ritual. Expertise in basketry enhances a man's status as a groom. Fibers are used as headbands and ropes. The fibers of a particular tree called lumbak are extensively used as headbands for carrying baskets and other heavy articles. The Ryang lifestyle is essentially agrarian. Joom was practiced in the past. from site selection in November-December to preparing the field, weeding, ploughing and harvesting. It was a long process shared by the entire community. Historically, the origin of shifting cultivation can be traced back to the Neolithic period that is 13,000 to 3,000 BC. The early man's transition from bow to hoe may have been an accident. Life in a kami revolves around agriculture. The cultivator's dream blends with the soil. Songs rise up from Mother Earth. The entire village of Dasumiryang Para sways to the lilting tune. A hojagiri dance goes on. <laughs> Ayatato pide komo, ayatato pide, 
Danu Choudhury Para, a small village on the eastern fringe of the state, is chiefly populated with the Nuakiyas. With a Tibeto-Burmese origin, the Nuatiyas are also called Tipras. Say some historians, Tripura was named after them. A group of Tripuris probably left their original abode during the reign of some ancient Hindu rulers belonging to the Khatriya clan. They took refuge in Chittagong Hill Tracts and Arakan. Matai Kana, the creator of the world, is their supreme god. The dance depicts the entire process of jhum, from site selection by a man and his wife, to cleaning the weeds and setting them on fire. Finally, the worship of Lampra to appease the god of the sea and the sky.
couple have the right over the first dish of the new rice. Eon was abundant in the past, but despite its scarcity now, the Noatia handicrafts have their own esteemed place in the market for their exquisite variety. Three types of marriages are practiced among the Nuatias. Monogamy is the tradition and marriage by negotiation is the most popular form of marriage. Another accepted form is Jamai Khata or marriage by service. Yet another form is marriage by eloping. The newlyweds are usually received by a young family member who washes the feet of the couple with holy water. Time rolls at a slow pace. A mother's hand swings the cradle with a sleeping child in it. The tremolo of a lullaby. The music in monotone slowly fills the air. The music of an elemental life of dreams and harvest, food and prosperity. The strains of this music rolls into ether from one journey to another. The words change, but not the essential spirit of life. The cradle swings high and it swings lower the melodic note of yet another lullaby. Thank you. 
थोड़ी रंग सावनी साजला ले ले From cradling a tender life to weaving an exotic Rinani Borok or Risa, it is the same hands of a woman. Life goes on. A Jamatia village. The popular belief is that Jama means tax and Tuya not to bear. They were guaranteed a tax exemption because of their service in the army in the old days. That is how the name Jamatia came into being. Ethnologically, akin to the Tripuris, the Jamatiyas have a traditional administrative system which is perfectly democratic in nature. A Hoda or Supreme Council exercises total social control over the community. The Hoda is again divided into three district units Luku or the village level council, Moyal or the regional council and Hoda or community level supreme council. The complainant and the accused both are present in the Luku court. Villagers witness the judgment. Setting in a comparatively low land for several hundred years, detached the Jamatiyas from Chum for generations. Plough cultivation has taken the center stage these days. The community wakes up to the changing times. Thus, a jatrai in Kokborok may be performed depicting various religious events to meet the contemporary problem of AIDS and the traditional dealing with Ochai, the guide of the clan, may find its own place in the play. The dance is an evocation of life.
driving through Thuptali, another small village. We come across faces whose ancestors fought the many invaders in the past. Traditionally known as hunter warriors, the cookies once dominated the entire state. The nomadic blood cooled down in the course of time. The cookies these days are settled cultivators. Here too, weaving is a family concern and it is strictly a woman's job. 